Okay, in this video we're going to look at examples of open balls, closed balls and spheres uh, in uh, some more abstract metric spaces. Uh, so the first one we're going to look at is uh, op the concept of open balls, closed balls and uh, spheres in uh, discrete metric spaces. So discrete metric spaces. So, uh, firstly, I'm just going to uh, quickly remind you of what a discrete metric space is. Uh, so, a discrete metric space consists of a set, X, and you can take whatever set you like. So, uh, it could be uh, the set, let's say, uh, phi, little phi, and F. Uh, so, there's a perfectly good set of three elements. And uh, the discrete metric, to define the metric on it, you define uh, the distance between any two elements, little x and little y, where little x and little y are elements of this set, big X, uh, it's going to be defined to be equal to uh, 0 if X is equal to Y, and it's going to defi be defined to be equal to 1 if X um, is not equal to Y. Uh, so um, if we drew out uh, the um, Cartesian product table for uh, this set, so we have phi, uh, lowercase v, f, uh, phi, lowercase v, f, then the Cartesian product table gives us capital phi, capital phi, uh, capital phi, lowercase phi, capital phi, uh, capital F, uh, lowercase phi, capital phi, um, let me just move this up, um, lowercase phi, lowercase phi, uh, lowercase phi, capital F, capital F, capital phi, capital F, lowercase phi, and capital F, capital F, and um, Basically, what's going to happen is that this distance function is going to map you onto zero if you are the if you if you are asking what if you if the two elements in this ordered pair are the same. Uh, so uh, all these diagonal terms will go to zero because but all of these have exactly the same term in. So x is equal to y in these cases. So the distance function of that ordered pair is going to be equal to zero. And if they're not equal, which is all these off diagonal components, uh, it's going to map it onto one. So this is what our uh, discrete metric function. is is going to look like for this um, for this set X. Uh, so remember the dis uh, the metric is a function from this Cartesian product uh, this the set the Cartesian product set um, of um, X by X. So the distance function maps the Cartesian product of X by itself onto uh, the uh, positive real numbers. So that's just uh, um, well, the non-negative real numbers. Uh, so let's just recall uh, why this forms a metric. Uh, so uh, the axioms of a metric space are that uh, firstly it should map it onto the positive, the, well, the non-negative real numbers. So we can clearly see that that's working. We're mapping it either onto zero or one, which are both elements of the non-negative uh, real numbers. So the distance function of any two elements x and y is indeed an element of the non-negative uh, real numbers. So that's ticked off. Uh, second axiom is that the distance between x and x should be equal to zero if x is equal to, well, if you have the two two of the same elements, then the distance between them should be equal to zero. That's clearly true, just by the definition. Uh, secondly, uh, if the distance between x and y is equal to zero, then that should imply that x is equal to y. Well, the only way that uh, the distance can be equal to zero is if they are the same, uh, just by definition over here. Uh, if they're not equal to one another, then the distance would be one. So that's obviously true as well. Uh, thirdly, the distance between x and y is equal to the distance between y and x. Uh, so, if x and y are the same thing, then the distance between x and y is clearly the same as the distance between y and x, because uh, you can replace y by x, and then if you swap them around, you still get the distance between x and x. So, uh, that's the equivalent of saying that if you reflect a diagonal element in the diagonal line, you just get back to the same element. Uh, Alternatively, if x and y are not equal to the, the same thing, uh, then the distance between x and y is going to be equal to 1, uh, which is going to be equal to the distance between y and x, because y and x are not the same thing in this, um, in this ordered pair here. Okay, uh, So that axiom clearly holds true. And then the triangle inequality, uh, the third part of this, uh, which is that we need to show that if we have uh, z, another element of the set, then the distance between x and y is less than or equal to the distance between x and z uh, plus the distance between z and y. Uh, well, there are two cases here. If x and y are equal to the same point, so if x is equal to y, then the distance between x and y is in fact equal to zero. So distance between x and y is equal to zero. And 
these numbers over here, the distance between x and z and the distance between z and y, can only equal 0 or 1. So when you add two of those together, the worst possible scenario is that you get 0 and 0 here. So you get, you're get adding two zeros. Uh, so whatever you do, whatever numbers these are, it's always going to be greater than or equal to, it's always going to be true that this is greater than or equal to 0. So this inequality is always going to hold true if the distance between x and y is equal to 0. Okay, so let's say x is not equal to y then the distance between x and y is equal to 1. Uh, and basically, uh, again, there are two cases. Either z is equal, uh, either uh, z is equal to x or z is equal to y. It can't be equal to both of them uh, because if it was equal to both of them, it would imply that they were equal to one another. Uh, and we know that x is not equal to y. So it's equal to one of them, which implies that one of these two, the distance between x and z or the distance between z and y, is equal to zero. Uh, but then the other one has to be equal to one because it can't be equal to both of them. Uh, so at the very worst case, this is going to be this side is going to be equal to one. So we'll get that one is equal to one. So the inequality still holds true then. Or uh, z is equal to neither of them, so z is not equal to x, uh, and z is not equal to y. Uh, then, on this side, we're going to get the distance between x and z, which is going to be equal to 1, because z is not equal to x. And on this side, we're going to get the distance between z and y is going to equal 1 again, so we'll get that 1 is less than or equal to 2, which again is, holds the inequality. So the triangle inequality is true for all... Um, for all possible combinations there. So the discrete metric space, that's just a bit of a recap of the discrete metric space. So if we take a set X uh, with this discrete metric, so this is a discrete metric space, let's have a look at what open balls look like in discrete metric spaces. So if we take a point little x, which is an element of this set x, and now we're just viewing x as some arbitrary set with a discrete metric defined on it. So if we take uh, some little element x, which is an element of this big set x, and we construct the open ball uh, centered at little x of some radius r, uh, then that's going to be equal to all points in y uh, which are an element, well, sorry, all points little y, which are an element of big X, uh, such that the distance between little x and little y uh, is less than r. So, there are two cases here. If r is less than 1, uh, then, or less than or equal to 1, in fact, uh, then we can, then the ball uh, centre the x of size r is going to be equal to, well, it's going to be equal to this, sorry, I'm just writing out the same thing again. What All the y is an element of x such that the distance between x and y is less than r, but r is less than or equal to 1. So we're asking the di distance between x and y is most definitely less than 1. So if this is less than or equal to 1 and this is less than r, then what we're definitely asking for distance between x and y uh, is less than 1. Uh, but there's only one point between x, uh, there's only one point in this entire metric space uh, which has a distance uh, from x which is less than 1. Because the distance between x and y is either equal to 0 or 1. And it's equal to 0 if, uh, if, x, um, if x is equal to y, and it's equal to 1 if x is not equal to y. So the only point that's going to be in this ball, if... Uh, if you're asking for a, rate, a ball of radius less than one, uh, well, uh, radius less than or equal to one, uh, is going to be the point. Is going to be the set, uh, point x itself. So this is going to consist of the set containing just the point x. If r is less than or equal to one, if however r is greater than one, if r is greater than one, uh, then the ball uh, centered at point x of radius r is going to consist of absolutely every point because you are asking for the set of points y which is an element of x uh, such that the distance between x and y is less than r but r is greater than 1 so you're asking for all those points uh, which have a distance from x uh, some less than some number greater than 1 oh uh, well that's absolutely all points because I all every every point in this set big x has a distance from x either equal to 0 which is the point x itself or it's equal to 1 which is absolutely everything else so absolutely everything else will come in here along with the point x so this will actually be equal to the entire set so open balls have a very strange structure in the uh, in the in the discrete metric space they can only take on uh, they can only take on the structure they can only take on two possibilities. They can take on the set just containing the singleton x, the point which is at the centre of the ball, or they can take on the set, uh, the entire set, basically. 
Similarly, closed balls uh, will, uh, around x of radius r, will just equal the point x if r is less than 1. Uh, this time it's not less than or equal to, it's just less than 1. Because if r is less than 1, this is the set of points in the metric space such that the distance uh, between x and that point uh, is less than or equal to 1, uh, is less than or equal to r rather, sorry, and r is less than 1, so it's going to be only the point x, because only the point x is going to uh, be a distance uh, less than or equal to some value which is less than 1 away from x, okay? Uh, whereas, if r is uh, greater than or equal to 1, uh, then uh, the ball uh, centre that any point x of radius r is going to be the whole space because absolutely every single point uh, is going to be is going to be a distance um, away from x uh, that is um, less than or equal or less than or equal to uh, some radius which is greater than or equal to one. So even if the radius is equal to one in this case, we will be asking for the set of all points in the metric space uh, or in the set of big X uh, such that the distance between uh, a little x and that point is less than or equal to one, and that's absolutely every single point. Okay, uh, and now, uh, so both of these sets, these set, two sets, these two balls, these two types of balls, open balls and closed balls, they are never empty, they are always non-empty sets. Uh, now let's look at the concept of a sphere. The sphere um, around a point x of radius r uh, is equal to the set of points y, which is an element of big X, such that the distance between little x and little y is exactly equal to r. Now, r is some positive number, it is not equal to 0, so if r is not equal to 1, then we will be asking for the distance between two points uh, to be equal to some number which is not equal to 1. That's not a possibility, because the only two possibilities are that your distance from x is either equal to 0, or your distance is equal to 1. We cannot ask for r to be equal to 0. Uh, just by definition. We have to ask for r to be some number greater than zero. So instead what you can ask, what you can say is the only time when you're going to get anything interesting is when you set r equal to one. If you ask for the sphere around point of radius one, then that is going to equal the whole set minus uh, the set containing the singleton point, because the singleton point is going to be the only point in the entire metric space which does not have a distance from itself equal to 1, uh, because its distance between itself and itself is equal to 0. Uh, so spheres, open balls and closed balls have a very odd structure in discrete metric spaces.